160 billion dollars, 450 tons, 28,000 kilometers per hour. It's the most expensive structure humanity has ever built, the International Space Station. Now, NASA has no choice but to orchestrate a controlled re-entry and send the ISS crashing back to Earth by 2030. Picture this, 450 tons of meticulously engineered space modules and solar arrays hurtling towards the ocean at 28,000 kilometers per hour. Why is NASA deorbiting this marvel of space exploration history? And what could possibly happen when something so massive is intentionally destroyed? As flames prepare to swallow decades of human ingenuity, NASA and SpaceX face an unprecedented challenge. Aiming the ISS at Point Nemo, the most remote location on Earth. But can they pull off the largest controlled re-entry ever attempted without disaster? Since 1998, the International Space Station has been humanity's proudest symbol of cooperation and curiosity. For over two decades, this largest space station ever constructed has been a home away from home for more than 240 astronauts from 19 countries. But the ISS's legacy isn't just about space exploration history. It's about real-world breakthroughs that have quietly transformed our daily lives. Cancer treatments saw revolutionary advancements through microgravity experiments conducted aboard the ISS, helping doctors design more targeted therapies. On Earth, agriculture in arid regions thrives today thanks to crop-growing techniques developed in orbit. Even your smartphone benefits from stronger, lighter alloys, perfected in zero gravity. Artificial intelligence, critical in today's hospitals and emergency rooms, took giant leaps forward thanks to innovations originally intended to assist astronauts aboard the ISS. In its quiet orbit around Earth, the ISS wasn't merely a research facility. It was a silent innovator, reshaping countless aspects of life for billions who rarely thought about what happens far above them. But even this legendary symbol of human achievement cannot defy the ravages of time. The International Space Station is aging, vulnerable to space debris dangers, and its controlled re-entry is no longer optional. It's inevitable. In early 2024, alarms blared aboard the International Space Station. Astronauts reported a toxic smell, forcing an emergency protocol led by Commander Sunita Williams. An invisible, menacing chemical leak threatened their lives, a stark reminder of the ISS's vulnerability. But this incident was just the tip of the iceberg. Months later, a terrifying debris impact shook the station. The astronauts scrambled, evacuating temporarily into a SpaceX Dragon ISS vehicle, highlighting a growing problem. Space debris dangers. Each piece of debris, a rogue bolt, a paint chip traveling at bullet speeds, posed a lethal risk to the station's delicate hull. Then came the slow, relentless air leak crisis in the Russian segment, draining 1.7 kilograms of air daily. Engineers struggled to locate and seal the breach, like sailors desperately trying to fix a sinking ship mid-ocean. These cascading crises culminated in NASA's inevitable decision, ISS decommissioning. After years of cumulative damage and growing risks, the station's deteriorating condition posed an unacceptable hazard. Micrometeorites had peppered the station's modules with tiny fractures. Aging metal strained under the brutal conditions of space, pushing the ISS toward a critical tipping point. Beyond these immediate concerns, maintaining the ISS's orbit has become increasingly challenging. The station requires regular reboots to counteract atmospheric drag, consuming significant amounts of propellant annually. As the station ages, its structural integrity diminishes, making these maneuvers riskier and less effective. Furthermore, the ISS's systems are becoming obsolete. Key components such as the electron oxygen generator and the carbon dioxide removal assembly, CDRA, have experienced repeated failures over the years, necessitating frequent repairs and replacements. Financial considerations also play a role. The cost of maintaining and operating the ISS is substantial, and NASA aims to allocate resources toward newer, more sustainable initiatives. Plans are underway to transition to commercially operated space stations, allowing NASA to focus on deep space exploration missions.
Ultimately, the decision to bring the ISS falling to Earth became clear. This wasn't a choice made lightly, it was made from necessity. The station's vulnerabilities could no longer be ignored. NASA had to initiate a controlled re-entry before a catastrophic, uncontrolled crash became unavoidable. But executing the controlled destruction of humanity's largest space station isn't a simple task. Imagine guiding a football field side structure weighing 450 tons, moving at an astonishing 28,000 kilometers per hour, back down to Earth safely. Even a slight miscalculation could spell disaster. NASA's engineers face a monumental challenge. Atmospheric conditions, solar activity, and the unpredictable nature of structural failure during re-entry make the ISS crash an unprecedented gamble. Experts warn that a deviation as minor as one degree could send debris scattering dangerously over populated areas rather than splashing harmlessly into Point Nemo. To visualize the scale, consider this worst case scenario. Burning fragments of the ISS ablaze at temperatures exceeding 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit, raining down on cities. It's an unimaginable catastrophe NASA must avoid at all costs. Teams around the globe prepare anxiously, meticulously plotting every second of the space station re-entry. Satellites, radar installations, and modified SpaceX Dragon ESS crafts coordinate in an international effort never seen before in space exploration history. The stakes couldn't be higher. Failure isn't just dangerous, it's unthinkable. The plan. NASA and SpaceX are teaming up to execute this historic controlled re-entry maneuver, spending nearly $1 billion on the complex process. Annually, operating the ISS consumes approximately $4.1 billion, which represents 16% of NASA's entire budget, making the economic necessity clear. Central to this extraordinary task is a modified SpaceX Dragon spacecraft, specifically adapted to handle this unprecedented operation. Equipped with an enhanced propulsion system, boasting 46 Draco thrusters and carrying 16,000 kilograms of propellant, six times its standard capacity, the Dragon is essentially transformed into a robust space tugboat. Enhanced solar arrays, redundant power systems, and safety measures ensure the mission can withstand two major system failures without compromise. The ISS's final journey demands flawless execution. Every second counts. Every maneuver meticulously calculated, this will be a valley of engineering precision, an unprecedented event in space exploration history. The final descent. The deorbiting of the International Space Station unfolds in an intricate sequence. Initially, the preparation phase begins months before the actual descent. Detailed simulations are run repeatedly, incorporating data about solar flare activity, atmospheric conditions, and the physical state of the ISS. The station orbits Earth every 90 minutes at speeds over 17,500 miles per hour, experiencing dramatic thermal cycling between extreme temperatures every orbit, adding further complexity to the re-entry calculations. Phase 2 sees the specialized SpaceX Dragon spacecraft rendezvous with the ISS, performing precision docking maneuvers that require exact timing down to milliseconds. With surgical accuracy, Dragon initiates thruster burns to gradually lower the ISS altitude from 400 kilometers. Each burn, closely monitored by ground control across multiple continents, gently nudges the ISS closer toward Earth's dense atmosphere, a delicate and high-stakes operation. At the critical altitude of approximately 120 kilometers, the third and most thrilling phase commences, atmospheric re-entry. Here, physics unleashes its full fury. As the ISS penetrates Earth's dense atmosphere, air friction intensifies, generating searing temperatures above 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit, enough to liquefy metal alloys and obliterate high-strength composites. Observers from ground stations across the globe watch anxiously as blazing fragments streak across the sky, forming a brilliant trail visible over thousands of kilometers. Advanced radar arrays, satellites, and tracking ships positioned strategically around the globe follow every fragment. Specialists have calculated exactly how the ISS structure will break apart, 
First, the expansive solar arrays ripoff, then delicate laboratory modules. Subsequently, the sturdy truss structure succumbs, disintegrating spectacularly amid sparks and fiery debris. The final precision targeting is executed meticulously, aiming debris at the isolated oceanic area known as Point Nemo, located precisely 2,688 kilometers from any inhabited landmass. This region, already home to over 263 pieces of defunct spacecraft, represents humanity's remote cosmic junkyard. Vessels and aircraft clear the perimeter, safely observing from distances designed to protect them from errant debris. In the concluding moments, most of the ISS disintegrates upon atmospheric entry. However, some sturdier structural elements survive, plunging into the depths of the Pacific Ocean, where advanced underwater drones and environmental teams commence immediate monitoring to study impacts on marine ecosystems. This unparalleled operation sets a new benchmark, representing the largest controlled re-entry in human history, underscoring humanity's capability to manage even the most extraordinary engineering challenges. Ultimately, the ISS's fiery descent serves as both an end and a new beginning. By 2030, the ISS will no longer exist, making way for new players in low Earth orbit, China's Tiangong, Axiom's commercial station, and more. China's Tiangong space station rapidly expands, soon doubling in size and capability, boldly asserting China's dominance in low Earth orbit. But they're not alone. Private players like Axiom Space and Blue Origin's Orbital Reef are crafting commercial habitats, envisioning space as a thriving business frontier. Europe's Airbus and America's Voyager Space collaborate on Starlab, aiming to transform space into humanity's next laboratory. Vast's ambitious haven stations promise advanced facilities and greater accessibility. Meanwhile, nations like India, Russia, and the UAE eagerly enter the orbital arena, racing to establish their own footholds beyond Earth. NASA's Lunar Gateway, orbiting the Moon, signals even broader ambitions. Humanity reaching beyond low Earth orbit. It leaves us with a big question, which now I want you to answer in comments. What do you think should replace the ISS, and who should build it? Let's talk in the comments. The International Space Station wasn't just a floating lab. It was a promise that no matter where we come from, we can build something extraordinary together. Soon the ISS will fall, not because it failed, but because it did exactly what it was meant to do, to show us that humanity's reach can stretch beyond borders, beyond politics, beyond Earth itself. If this story made you pause, if it made you feel something, then it deserves to be shared. Share this video with one person who still believes we can build things bigger than ourselves. And if you want to uncover more hidden stories behind the world's greatest mega projects, I would be honored to have you join this journey by subscribing right now. Thank you, truly, for giving me your time, your attention, and your curiosity. In a world full of noise, you chose to spend these minutes with me. And that means everything.